Thomas Jefferson said, every generation needs a new revolution. Our grandparents had World War II fought the Nazis. Our parents had the Civil Rights Revolution. Our generation has ShamWow and Prozac. That's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> we just went through the worst decade since disco, and how did we deal with it? We bitched on the internet, got medical marijuana cards, and played Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> That's right. Our generation never had a galvanizing moment, a moment of pure sacrifice. People say, yeah, you did, you had 9-11. Yeah, but our president said, I want you to go shopping. <laughs> so we sacrificed our credit rating. We are a generation that got what it wanted, when it wanted it. Man, at the millennium, we partied like it was 1999. <laughs> and then we had a 10-year bathtub tequila hangover, man, just <laughs> hugging the metaphorical toilet on a daily basis. Do you guys remember the last decade? Holy crap. It was like going on a 10-year bender when you woke up, people had to explain what happened. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> Bush lost the election, but the Supreme Court violated the Constitution, made him president anyway? Oh, I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> what, goat farmers crashed airplanes into the World Trade Center? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Iraq war, but they didn't do anything, man. There was no weapons of mass. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Katrina, how come we're not helping those people? How come we gave people who lost their trailers more trailers? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Afghanistan, two wars? What, is Halliburton getting a volume discount now? Uh, Bush got elected again? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh. oh, God. Uh, hey, Haiti fell over? Who built Haiti? Two of the three little pigs? Uh, uh, Toyotas are just crashing randomly into preschools? I can't trust Toyota anymore? Uh, Oh God, oh God, uh, unemployment 10%. Everybody lost their house. BP oil spill. Ah! Oh God, please stop it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, oh Japan, earthquake, tsunami, and got nuked. Fuck, man. <laughs> what? Why don't you just bring Godzilla back? It would have done less damage. <laughs> oh God, please give me some good news. Please, God, just give me some good news. That's all I want. <laughs> Osama Bin Laden is dead? <laughs> oh my God, that was so easy. It only took two trillion dollars, two wars, and too many good men. <laughs> oh God, please end this decade, this horrible decade, this horrible Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, Kim Kardashian, talentless slut decade. Please end it. <laughs> this horrible decade where all of us men tried to be individual rebels by wearing the exact same flaming skull on a bedazzled Ed Hardy thermal. <laughs> I've got three of them. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. <laughs> Metrosexual men acting like women. What happened to men? I'm calling it right now, ladies. We're going back to being real men starting tonight. Yes. <laughs> Don't you ladies clap. You started it. <laughs> 
10 years ago, remember, why you gotta be so macho? What's the deal with you, man? Why don't you turn that one brow into a duo? What is that? <laughs> Extra nose hair is not a mustache. Clean this up, man. And then you invented a word, manscape. <laughs> and we shaved ourselves bald like nine-year-old boys. <laughs> Cause we wanted to sleep with you. It's getting out of control. I'm coming back from Philadelphia. There's a grown man sitting in first class wearing Dr. Pepper flannel pajama bottoms and Ugg boots. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. I just walked up, smudged his nail polish. Take that, fruit cup. <laughs> and that's another thing. No more mani petties with your girlfriends, guys. No more couples day of beauty, all right? If you're gonna do it, leave your testicles in the glove compartment. <laughs> There's two approved methods from now on to get a pedicure for a guy. Number one, you use your own grinder, or yeah. you have an 18-year-old Vietnamese girl rub your feet and call you Joe, and that's it. Yeah. Clint Eastwood doesn't moisturize, but Clint Eastwood needs to moisturize. And I'm not talking about chivalry or disemboweling your opponent in the octagon, man. I'm just talking about proving you're man enough to procreate this species. I had a real job at 14 years old. At 17, I was on my own. At 20, I cut the liver out of a drifter and gave it to my father. Because <laughs> my dad's a drinker and I love my dad. <laughs> and for 80 bucks, you can do anything in Mexico. <laughs> right. <clears throat> So I'm calling it. Here's how you know if you're a man or not. If you're old enough to buy beer, but your mom still makes you breakfast, I'm suspending your guy card as of tonight. <laughs> if you bring a woman home after a night at a bar, you wake up the next morning and your dad walks in and wants to meet your little friend, <laughs> you're a boy. <laughs> Put on your underoos, go into the living room, pick up the game control, and get to level 10 on Halo, homo. <laughs> And when did mediocrity become excellence in America? My God, music is dead in 2011 because Lady Gaga lives. <laughs> really? Is that the best we can do, p -p 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 of this stuttering, growling midget with a speech impediment, his music? <laughs> really? I'm sorry, you're not an artist just because you are a live chimpanzee as a bra. <laughs> Lady Gaga makes Miley Cyrus look like John Lennon. <laughs> She makes Jack Lemmon look like John Lennon. <laughs> Lady Gaga is proof that David Bowie raped Carol Burnett. <laughs> and this next decade, we are not gonna be afraid of stuff we're not supposed to be afraid of, no matter what Anderson Cooper or Sanjay Gupta says. <laughs> Swine flu shut us down for like a year, man. <laughs> Lining up for vaccinations like it was a U2 concert. <laughs> Anybody get the swine flu? Rest my case. <laughs> Pig virus supposed to wipe out half the planet, man, but no one's afraid of bacon, and that's the silent killer. <laughs> yeah. America is number one in obesity. We need a bacon vaccine. <laughs> and I'm calling this too. Terrorism is over. And not because Osama went down. It's been over for a long time. There's no terrorism anymore. In 2001, this douchebag got lucky with the World Trade Center. Since then, 10 years, we had one guy tried to light his shoes on fire, <laughs> and another man tried to explode his underwear in first class. So I guess Al-Qaeda's been outsourcing bomb making to Ringling Brothers now? <laughs> and people go, what about the Times Square incident? What about the Times Square incident? The Times Square incident was not a terrorist attack. That was a Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> The terrorist locked the keys to the safe house he was going to escape to in the car bomb. And I love that he locked the car bomb. No one's getting my iPod! <laughs> Left the keys to the car bomb hanging out of the tailgate of the car bomb and built the car bomb at a fertilizer that would not explode. I've been doing comedy 25 years and I have never been that funny. <laughs> So I guess before we got him, Osama turned the family business over to his cousin, Billy Bob Bin Laden. <laughs> Did you hear Al-Qaeda has an online magazine? <laughs> I'm not making that up, man. <laughs> Al-Qaeda Online. Guess what? You stop being a terrorist organization when you start raising money to fight the infidels using PayPal. 
and having vodka pop-up ads. <laughs> Absolute jihad! <laughs> Goes down smooth! <laughs> la la la! <laughs> and let's define terrorist organization. A terrorist organization is an organization that keeps you scared all the time and makes you change your behavior. What does CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC do all the time? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Wolf Blitzer, terrorist. <laughs> Glenn Beck, terrorist. <laughs> Nancy Grace, terrorist. <laughs> That's right. Her and her plastic surgeon. Terrorists don't have to work on a plan or blow us up, man. The news scares us so much, we're scared all the time. They just sit in the cave or, or the mansion in Pakistan. <laughs> Ahmed, take off your grenade blazer. Don't, you don't have to go today. No, the 72 virgins can wait. <laughs> Glenn Beck's going to call the president the Antichrist. Watch this. <laughs> and we all know the Antichrist is Gary Coleman's wife. <laughs> oh. She pushed a midget down the stairs. <laughs> the only news organization that is not a terrorist organization is the BBC. Because the BBC can make the worst thing sound OK. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the BBC. <laughs> Satan has re-entered the planet. <laughs> He's picking up babies in his talons, biting off their heads, and sucking out their souls. <laughs> We're in for a thousand years of darkness. All hope is lost. And now, the World Cup update. <laughs> Don't feel so bad. I'm tired of being afraid. For 10 years since 9 we've been afraid. It's over. It's time to take a country back for us, take America back for us. It's time for revolution. Are you guys ready? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Hold on, what day? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, Monday's bad. <laughs> now my kid has a soccer thing, and it's my TiVo catch-up night. <laughs> so I'll tell you, why don't you text me some alternative revolution days, and I will have my assistant call you. <laughs> Everybody wants revolution. No one's willing to pack a lunch. But Thomas Jefferson also said, the tree of liberty needs to be fertilized from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. <laughs> yeah, and I heard that. And I, and I thought, I'm out. <laughs> I got to bleed? <laughs> I was looking up new quote. <laughs> I like what George Orwell said. Every joke is a tiny revolution. That I can do. <laughs> of course, the revolution in America started two years ago. Because like it or hate it, America has a black president. <laughs> That's right. Yes. That's right. And the economy tanked. <laughs> You know why? Because all those people that said, I'll bet you a billion dollars there will never be no black president. <laughs> <laughs> they had to pay up. <laughs> Racism is over, man. Black people aren't telling white jokes. White people aren't telling black jokes. We decided to team up and go after the gay people. Because <laughs> in 2011, gay's the new black. <laughs> Do you know they just got the right, like, six months ago to visit their partners, their life partners in the hospital? Fight the power. <laughs> and I hear this, too. Hey, gay people are doing great, man. Don't ask, don't tell got repealed. <laughs> yeah. Gay people just got the right in December to be openly gay and get shot. <laughs> that's right. Before, they had to go, ow. Oh. Now they can go, oh, my god, that's horrible. <laughs> Uniform is ruined! <laughs> we shall overcome, man. <laughs> you can always tell a racist in America, too. Like, if you know the name of six different NASCAR drivers and the erectile dysfunction drug they're sponsored by, <laughs> you may have a problem. We have a black president. <laughs> if you've ever hand painted a Confederate flag on the roof of a used car, <laughs> you may have a problem. We have a black president. <laughs> if you think Al Roker is uppity,
You may have a problem. We have a black president, but don't. And I'll tell you why. Every black guy got the big job throughout history was always amazing at it, man. Jackie Robinson in baseball, phenomenal. Thurgood Marshall on the Supreme Court, amazing justice. Jesse Owens in the Olympics. People, Jesse Owens was so good in 1936, he pissed off Hitler. <laughs> Hitler left the stadium, and Jesse was like, hey, where you going, eh, dawg? <laughs> Yo, bring me another white boy, I need a snack. <laughs> I don't believe how fast this guy is, my church. <laughs> You said we was a master race, but this guy is a black flash. <laughs> Tiger Woods in golf and sleeping with white women? <laughs> Best we've ever seen. <laughs> Had to quit golf for a while, because he's a pimp now. <laughs> he's got a stable of 120 Denny's waitresses to manage. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're a billionaire. Couldn't you bump the slut level up just a little bit? <laughs> Even the porn star he was dating played a Denny's waitress in a porn movie. <laughs> but to be a black man and dominate a white sport like golf as long as Tiger Woods has, it's easy to become a KKK grand dragon as a black man. <laughs> By the way, if you're here tonight and you're a KKK grand dragon, you may have a problem, we have a black president. <laughs> So I'm not concerned Obama is black. I'm scared to death he's half white. Because <laughs> those are the people that got us here. Black people didn't do what's wrong with our country right now. White guys did it, man. I know I'm a pasty-faced peckerwood. I get it. <laughs> but let me ask you something, white people. Honestly, do you trust white people? <laughs> Let's just go, let's go to recent history. Let's go back to Reagan. Good president, okay, but don't forget, when Reagan left office, we had the highest deficit we'd ever had at that point. Then Bush number one came in, we had a bigger deficit, huge tax increase during a Republican. Then Clinton came in, gave away all our jobs to other countries because of NAFTA. Now all we make in this country is lattes and Big Macs while kids are sucking lead paint off of toys made in Beijing. <laughs> and then we got Bush two, the revenge. <laughs> White guy, white guy, white guy, white guy. All those people that took that tarp money, man. Too big to fail. General Motors, Chrysler. White guy, white guy, white guy, white guy, white guy. They went back us like that. AIG, Lehman Stearns, Bear Stearns, Citibank, Madoff. White guy, 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 white guy. Frankly, I want a blacker president. That's right. I want a blue black president. I want a president so black, light cannot escape him. Yes, Secret Service has to tell him jokes just to find him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. During his inaugural speech, he should pop and click. That's how black I want him. <laughs> a president who wears Air Force Ones on Air Force One. I want a president so black his motorcade still gets pulled over for no reason. That's right. I trust him. He's bringing his A game. And why do you listen up? We don't get to run anything for 20 years, man. We had 230 something years to fix this place, and look what we did, man. And here's the good news though in 20 years, we get to go, <laughs> it wasn't that easy, bitches, was it? <laughs> but you really want to be America? You want to be what this country says it is? All men created equal. Then I say, everybody gets a shot to be president. First President Obama, then President Rodriguez. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? The border problem finally gets solved, and the White House lawn looks better. <laughs> so, President Obama, I want you to know something. You've made us proud to be Americans once again. You know why? Because like you or hate, you proved this country is what it says it is. If you work hard enough in America, you can be anything, but we are all watching you, cracker. <laughs> Right, I called the black president a cracker, man. <laughs> and you know, with what's going on in the world right now, racism is so stupid. With, you know, with India's blowing up, there's more billionaires in India, and China's growing at 10% rate, Japan's technology, except when it comes to nuclear reactors. <laughs> Obama being president, if you're a racist right now in 2011, 
you just look like a retard, man. <laughs> because the truth is the truth. We're all brilliant and we're all douchebags. <laughs> That's the truth, man. Bill Gates, brilliant. That Jared Loeffner kid that shot that congresswoman, man, douchebag. <laughs> you know, do you guys know the first open heart surgery ever done on the planet was done by a black doctor, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, and he did it in 1893? 1893, was he using a piece of flint rock and a railroad tie? 1893? <laughs> Brilliant doctor. You know why he had to do the world's first open heart surgery? Because two black guys got in a knife fight and one stabbed the other one in the heart. <laughs> Douchebags. <laughs> hey, you don't see Al Sharpton wearing that T-shirt. <laughs> and black people went crazy when Obama got elected, and for good reason. We know the history, 400 years of slavery. About time they got fired up, man. They should have. But don't forget, Obama getting elected was great for white people, too, man, because we are in slavery rehab right now, man. <laughs> two years, we got a two-year chip. We're in recovery. Woohoo! <laughs> Only 398 more years to go, and we got that monkey off our back! <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That, is, that is not what I meant. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> That's not what I meant. And out here in California, man, people think we're so liberal around the country, man. But even in L.A., man, black people were just like, black president, black president, get ready, whitey. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's half white, too. <laughs> and I can prove that, because I saw him dancing in that parade with Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have photographic evidence our president is half white. <laughs> Do you guys remember that on Argyle Day? <laughs> That's right. Remember that man? They had a band behind him. They got out of the car. You know, dig it, dig it in this band. And Michelle's dancing cool, and Obama's just. <laughs> Secret Service lost it. POTUS is having a seizure. POTUS is having a seizure. Get in there. Get in there right now. Hold on. Stand down. <laughs> My God, I think he's dancing. I voted for him. I'm proud I did. I want to be very clear about one thing before we go any further. I am not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I don't believe in it. I believe all it does is split us in two, makes us pissed at each other instead of the people that are actually screwing things up. <laughs> Toyota Prius drivers. And by the way, left and right, if you believe so far left and right, it doesn't work. If you're so far left, you actually believe that somebody owes you a job, citizenship, and a free heart transplant? You're mentally ill. <laughs> and if you're so far right, you believe somebody who doesn't have a job and who's not a citizen deserves to have their heart cut out and sold on eBay? <laughs> mentally ill. <laughs> We're all in the middle somewhere. And I voted for him, and I was proud I did, you know? And then... He wins a Nobel Peace Prize and gives a speech on why we need to stay at war. <laughs> I just kept waiting for him to rip his face off. <laughs> it's Dick Cheney. <laughs> you will never get rid of me. I'm a Highlander. There can be only one. That was a newspaper headline the next day. Obama wins Peace Prize, gives speech on why we need to stay at war. And I thought, wow, that's in joke form. I don't have to do anything with that. <laughs> the newspaper's getting crazier, man. Just pick it up. 11 months ago, here's the headline. White group in Pennsylvania sues Indian tribe for ruining the land. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how big your sack has to be as a white guy? to sue some Indians for ruining the land? All 23 Indians that are left were pissed, man. They're like, oh, this is ironic. You are obviously not a student of history. And in that spirit, accept these blankets as our gift. Right. Bury your face and breathe deep. If you did not understand that joke, <laughs> you are not a student of history. <laughs> and went to a public school <laughs> with textbooks from Texas. <laughs> My favorite unintentional joke headline of the last decade. And this one, you know, this one had to be written by a comic because it's so short, it's got that hard right turn in it. Ready? <laughs> Pro-lifer shoots and kills a man. <laughs> 
Let me say it again. Pro-lifer shoots and kills a man in church. <laughs> so he was a devout murderer. Now, if your organization is actually called the Pro-Lifers, do you need an orientation to explain the not kill part of that? <laughs> okay, that's what we're about here at the Pro-Lifers. Any questions? Yeah, I got me a question. <laughs> so I get we're supposed to protect life. Can I also shoot some people? <laughs> okay, everybody open their pamphlets to page one again. Now, the guy said he shot the guy in the church because the guy was a late-term abortionist. Now, is that a good enough reason to kill somebody? I mean, because Texas had late-term abortions for a long time. They just called it the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just a really, really late-term abortion? Texas has been running 20 to 80-year-old fetuses through old lightning on a conveyor belt, man. Texas is killing people in the 73rd trimester. I prefer that term better anyways, man, don't you? You know, death penalty's so negative. Where's your uncle? Late-term abortion row? <laughs> We're appealing his abortion right now. <laughs> now, I have an opinion about abortion. Not enough to shoot somebody in a small theater in San Diego, so relax. <laughs> but I don't know if it's okay, I gotta be honest. I don't know if you can take a baby from the womb before you know what it could be. What if that kid was gonna cure cancer? What if that kid would be the greatest leader we ever had and bring about world peace? So I don't think there should ever be any abortions, ever! But I do believe once that child is born, <laughs> there should be a 22-year late-term abortion window. <laughs> Because I have, I have two kids that I love with all my heart, so far. <laughs> and I say 22 years, because you want to make sure the kid can handle his alcohol. <laughs> like, he's a great kid till his 21st birthday, gets drunk, punches grandma. Oh! <laughs> Adam! You were this close! <laughs> we are going to miss you. You want to start a revolution tomorrow, you let every teenager in this country know there's a 22-year late-term abortion window. <laughs> Things would change overnight, man. And your lawn would get mowed when you said. <laughs> you would never utter this phrase again. Did you clean your room like I asked? Yes, I did, Father. I've also repainted and installed high-speed internet. <laughs> now I'm going to recheck my homework and then build a scale model of the galaxy for extra credit. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. <laughs> I love you too, perfect child. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to have that power over your kid? Just that kind of, just, just Brian, get in here. <sighs> your mother and I were looking at your report card. <laughs> you know, what did we say was gonna happen if you got one more D? Your mom's getting the vacuum right now. <laughs> I get it's an odd concept. But you don't know what a baby in the womb could be. But if you got a teenager living at home, been rolling around in his own filth for the last couple years, <laughs> been fired from four different Kentucky Fried Chickens, <laughs> got a nine on the GED, <laughs> you know, don't you? <laughs> hey, what happened to your kid? Ah! We late term aborted him. God's will. <laughs> His car's for sale if you want to buy it. Because the technology's phenomenal right now. Do you guys know they can pull some amniotic fluid from a woman's womb right now, test it, and find out if the kid has Down syndrome or something wrong genetically? And they're doing gene therapy in the womb right now? That's amazing. We need to take this technology to the next level, where they can pull some fluid and find out if your kid's going to be the one that's going to drive slow in the fast lane with his left <laughs> turn signal because he's texting his autobiography while he's swerving across three lanes. We could just cross his ass off before he even got here, man. <laughs> Your daughter's gonna be that girl in Starbucks that stands in front of you for 25 minutes, gets to the front line, and then looks at the menu? <laughs> and then goes, what's in a latte? <laughs> what? You're not welcome on the planet, sorry. <laughs> sorry. 
done. Be hard to hear, though, wouldn't it? Be hard to hear. Mr. Titus, we've tested the fetus. I want you to know that your son, he's going to be a brake tapper. <laughs> Are you sure? That's on his mother's side, damn it. I guess we're going to have to try again. It's going to happen. Do not be naive, because they're mapping out the genome right now. They're figuring about what all these genes do. They're figuring out all the good genes and all the douchey genes. <laughs> and one day, they're going to call it. One day, you know, because you know, the terrorists tell us all the time. Sorry, CNN tells us all the time. <laughs> running out of food, running out of water. We don't have enough. Too many people. China has limited everybody to one kid right now in China. You want kids. So one day, when you want a kid, they're going to call it. They're going to say, hold on, we need to test it. And if your kid doesn't fit in the genetic parameters, it's not welcome to the party on this big blue rock. You know, if your kid's got a propensity towards serial killing, not welcome here. If it's going to be addicted to crystal meth, you know, or you know, live near a 7-Eleven, not welcome. <laughs> if it's going to have a domestic violence problem, man, or be a family law attorney, out. <laughs> By the way, if there's any family law attorneys here, fuck you! <laughs> I really mean that. <laughs> but that's what's going to happen. They're going to call it one day. We're getting overpopulated. That's what's going to happen. Or let's go the other way. Let's say some crack-addicted stripper is going to give birth to the, to the next, you know, you know, John F. Kennedy, the next Martin Luther King. Well, instead of letting that poor girl die during her daily pimp beating, <laughs> we isolate her, give her everything she needs, and once the kid's born, we abort the parent. Because <laughs> there's some parents that need to go. And after about 25 years of my new legislation, <laughs> what would happen is the only people left on this planet would be the most amazing, incredible people of all races, people up to one thing, evolving this human race to the next level in love, hope, and peace. And there would never be anybody left on this planet who would have the balls to walk into a house of God and shoot a man down in cold blood. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Late-term abort a man in cold blood. <laughs> Am I out of line here? <laughs> We've all been somewhere in the last couple of months in public, seen somebody's little birth defect just running around, <laughs> and prayed to God for a late-term abortion rule. <laughs> I'm in the DMV a while back. Now, why am I in the DMV? Because I'm a patriot, and I protest speed limits by exceeding them. <laughs> Now, if you're going to join me on my quest, little tip, when the cop walks up to give you the ticket, do not tell him you're the Nelson Mandela of the highways. Because <laughs> he will impound your car <laughs> and give you a DUI. <laughs> so I'm in the DMV dealing with this. Room full of adults like this, not half as happy as you guys. <laughs> One kid. One little five-year-old, little fat kid. And I have no issue with little fat kids. Some of them are really cute. This kid, not cute, man. <laughs> this kid was the Grand Marshal riding the fudge float in the juvenile diabetes parade. <laughs> I'm sorry. He had no bone structure, man. He had no chins, no elbows, nothing. He was, he was Jabba the Fat. Who got Duga Boogie? This kid, he was a peanut M&M in tennis shoes. That's it. <laughs> but I had no problem with that. It was his behavior. His right hand holding the Snickers bar the size of a Louisville slugger. It was a survival Snickers bar, man. <laughs> and they said Snickers and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Left hand holding the Tickle Me Elmo doll. You pull the string and it talks as if he's done something to it, because it doesn't talk right anymore, man. He pulls the string and it doesn't go, ha, 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 ha. It goes, ha, 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 Tickle Me! Sounds like an angry, drunk Catholic priest. <laughs> and here's what this child is doing. A room full of adults. Here's what he's doing. Dad, I hate it here. I want to go. This sucks. I don't like it here. I want to go. He was making the DMV worse. <laughs> 
And then he goes, Dad, I'm leaving. And he heads for the door. <laughs> He's five. Now, my father would have let me leave. <laughs> and I would have been run over in the parking lot <laughs> by a student driver. <laughs> then my dad would have taken an orange safety cone, scooped up my remains, <laughs> and buried me under a headstone that said, hey, he wanted to leave. <laughs> This kid is heading for the door, and I'm watching his dad. His dad is in line. His dad is third in line. I know! <laughs> and he's one of those new age timeout dads that we developed in the last 10 years. So it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's wearing a shirt made out of organic hemp and regret. <laughs> he's got on Crocs. <laughs> Perfect little soul patch. He looked like that dad that volunteers to pass out the trophies to the losers in Little League. <laughs> and when did that start? <laughs> when... When did we start giving out trophies for sucking? Because I would have been a legend. We'd had a 20-foot mantle at our house, man, over the fireplace. There's where I sucked at baseball. There's where I sucked at football. There's where I sucked at soccer. There's where I dominated for 10 years, sucking at speaking English to any one of the female sex. <laughs> I'm proud of that one. They had to retire my silver vinyl reflective bomber jacket. <laughs> Said Corvette right on it. <laughs> Anybody think it's a good idea to get a trophy for losing? It's not a good idea. That's a communist idea, man. You don't get a trophy for losing. You get pizza and you shut your ass up. <laughs> That's what you get. That's right, man. Your dad. Your dad bitches at you on the way to the pizza parlor. You get out, he goes, here's a dollar, go play those video games. I'm gonna hit on this waitress and get drunk because looks like my kid's not getting a scholarship. <laughs> Trophies for losing? What the hell happened to us, man? It's time to take America and end this. My daughter played soccer last year. Last year, they were horrible. This year, by the way, just to be clear, out of 160 teams, they came in third. Pretty cool. But last year, they sucked. <laughs> they was lost seven out of 10 games. The three games they won, they won because when the other team showed up, they didn't have enough players to legally play. <laughs> but that's a W in America right now. And my kid was the best kid on the team. And I know I sound like I'm being a dad, but at least my kid chased the ball up and down, man. It was a co-ed team. And our goalie the whole game just stood in the goal and did this. <laughs> Balls whipping around his head. Our right forward would stand where he was supposed to stand, but if the ball went away too long, he would start to drift. <laughs> and then he'd start watching the game in the other field. <laughs> and picked his nose. I never saw a child love picking his nose. This kid picked his nose like his skull had a clitoris, man. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I'm not the dad to have at that game. The ball's over here, retard! <laughs> I didn't get to go to all the games. <laughs> by parental petition. <laughs> Restraining order, whatever they call it. <laughs> Here's the good news. My daughter became a team player, man. She made these friends that she's still friends with. It was phenomenal. I, I met some parents. We laughed our asses off. It was great. So we get done with the season. I go, all right, hon, you know, this was fun. Let's go pick a new sport you're gonna suck at because you're eight. Come on. <laughs> she goes, no, Dad. You gotta take us to the trophy ceremony. <laughs> and my first thought was, my God, they're gonna make you watch the talented kids get trophies? <laughs> that is brutal <laughs> and humiliating. And I love that. <laughs> That's right. Because maybe you'll feel some humiliation and you'll play better next year. All right, let's go to the trophy <laughs> ceremony. Yes. And when she stopped crying, <laughs> He said, no, Dad, we get trophies. And it just came out. I went, for what? <laughs> and when she stopped crying, 
She said, because we participated. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that where we're at in America now? In 10 years, we lost that? that day. Really? Even Americans don't participate. We dominate, man. Russians put a satellite around the moon, we land on it. Take that, bitches. <laughs> Really, participation's enough now? Really, that we're at? Everybody shows up and gets a trophy? Really? Let me point something out. France participates. <laughs> Anybody want to be France? Participation? What the hell happened to us, man? You know, participate? You know, you know, I have some issues with this, and I just don't have comedic issues. I have social fabric of this amazing nation's issues, man. Because if you're in here right now and you actually believe that every child deserves a trophy because his self-esteem is as important as everybody else, and I know he's 420 pounds and he's never eaten an apple in his whole life, but gosh darn it, there are no losers. <laughs> if you think that, I want you to remember tonight's show. <laughs> when that child is 32 years old, standing in your kitchen, because it still lives with you. <laughs> and it's asking to borrow another $100 because it just can't seem to get a job doing this. <laughs> you know what scares me worse? What about the other kid? What about the kid that busted his ass? The kid that was doing laps in the womb prenatal, that kid. <laughs> The kid that got up for an hour before school and just winged a football through a tire for an hour, that kid gets the same crap-ass trophies as this spinning, nose-picking vampire, really? He's only gonna take that for so long. <laughs> then one day during his senior year, in his home ec class, he's gonna walk in there with a shotgun and an overdeveloped sense of competition. <laughs> We're all winners! Ha ha ha! <laughs> Everybody gets a trophy! <laughs> I'm gonna beat those Columbine kids! So I'm watching this five-year-old run across the DMV. <laughs> He's hauling ass. His dad leaves the line, starts chase. Yeah, it was like this weird, like, urban National Geographic film, man. <laughs> Kid's running, dad's hopping ropes to get to him, man. Kid gets to the door, touches the door. All the father does is put his hand on the kid's shoulder. The kid goes, no! And I swear to God, if that father had punched that child, I would have testified it was self-defense. <laughs> Your Honor, I saw that child try to kill that man. <laughs> Thought he was gonna beat him to death with that Snickers bar, so... <laughs> we were all afraid for our lives. That man is not an abuser, nay, I say hero. <laughs> but it doesn't end there. Todd so goes, no, Dad! You're a frickin', Mom's a frickin', and this whole place is a frickin'! <laughs> you know, if you're already so low on the parental totem pole skill-wise, that you're just letting your child scream frickin' in a public place? <laughs> just let him say fuck. Yeah. <laughs> He's already going to prison. <laughs> Don't make him a bottom bunk, too. Oh, I'm sorry, the guy walking around the prison yard saying, frickin's wearing a halter top. <laughs> and has a lot of cigarettes for services rendered. <laughs> so now, I'm waiting for some parenting, because I want you guys to take one quick second and think about what would have happened to you at five years old if you did this in a public place. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> so I realized the DMV is about to give fun. <laughs> a sentence rarely said. 
and I watch this dad walk over to his kid, and he walks over with purpose. And he leans in, and he starts to negotiate with a five-year-old. <laughs> Colton, 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 focus. <laughs> now, you tell daddy what needs to happen to transform this behavior. I will save your life with what I have to say. <laughs> and it was at that exact second I decided to write this show. Because I realized, oh, we're about to go extinct. <laughs> yeah, drink up, because it's fucking over, man. <laughs> I'm seriously, man, this is what this is going to be. We're going to turn it over to these kids? Really? You know what pissed me off more than anything? No one said anything. That was the weirdest part. Is no one said, dude, deal with your kid. No one said, son, you listen to your father, because that would have changed everything. Everybody just kind of turned away. And I realized, oh my god, the village is dead. We give a crap about one thing, ourselves, and that's it, man. After 9-11, we got scared, man. I gotta prep mine, gotta make sure I'm okay. You know, I don't remember a time like this. No one got involved? I don't remember a time like this, man. I, I, I didn't grow up that long ago. I'm not saying, I remember in the 30s, it was a lot different. <laughs> one decade, we lost it, man. Growing up in my neighborhood, we didn't have two parents in my neighborhood. We had 60 parents in my neighborhood. <laughs> And if you got out of line and your parents weren't around, somebody pinch hit for them. <laughs> Sometimes actually hit for them. <laughs> I remember getting drugged down the street by a neighbor I didn't know. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Taking to see your dad. No, not my dad, please, not my dad. Put me in a basement, rape me, not my dad, please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> Took me. Took me right to the front door. <laughs> Mr. Titus, hi. Uh, we caught Chris down the street setting cats on fire. <laughs> Thanks for bringing him home, Randy. Chris, I want you to go in the garage, get some gasoline, because I'm going to show you how a cat feels. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to negotiate how much gasoline. <laughs> I'm not kidding about my father much at all. I'm really not. Some people here know my dad. Oh, uh -uh, I'm not kidding about my dad. My, my dad was intense, man. My dad used to beat other kids' asses in supermarkets. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, because my. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Right. That's him. <laughs> I forgot that was going to be up there. <laughs> you know why? Because my father truly believed it took a village to raise a child. And every village needed a rogue sheriff <laughs> who played by his own rules. <laughs> First time I saw my father hit another kid, I was nine years old. Now, why did my dad wait till I was nine to start hitting other kids? Because at nine, I was pretty well behaved. <laughs> Because I knew what could happen, man. <laughs> so he had to keep his skills up hitting other children. <laughs> you can still pull my father's fingerprints and DNA from the back of my skull. I never got hit once in my life, but I got popped quite a bit. <laughs> and he got away, he got off uh, the hook on that uh, child abuse semantic loophole. <laughs> I have these things in my life I call gray areas, where I can remember smarting off to my dad, and I woke up in the third grade. <laughs> I'm not dead, but I'm hazy for like a year and a half. <laughs> when I was 13, I got in his face. I'm a man now, and I woke up in the third grade. <laughs> I was making a hand turkey. <laughs> so we're in the supermarket one day, and by the way, if, before we go any further, I want you to know if I'm in your lovely town this week, and I happen to see one of your children running wild, and I don't see you, they're going down. <laughs> in the distance, in the distance, you're gonna hear, wee ha 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 slap evil. <laughs> then you're gonna come run around the corner. What happened? I don't know, I was looking at DVDs, and then he tripped and he fell, and he slid on his face, and someone kicked him against that kiosk. I don't know, I don't know what happened. He was out of control. 
where were you? Because that's your fault. And I'm not saying this because I think your kids are brats. I'm saying it because I get, didn't get to run wild as a kid, and it pisses me off. I'm taking my revenge as an adult. <laughs> Running wild in a store with my father, my God, I stood next to the cart. That was it. Didn't walk in front of the cart because Dad would just run you over with it. <laughs> didn't walk behind it because he would just stomp your ass out of the way, man. Next to the, the only reason my dad ever let me walk away from the cart was in case I needed to go get him a beer to help him make it through the store. <laughs> so one day in the supermarket, at the, at the register end, coming around the corner, other end of the aisle, dairy section, woman comes around with her kid, single mom. I know she's a single mom because my dad trained me well. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was like slut CSI, man. <laughs> You can always tell a single mother in the supermarket. It's noon, but her makeup's really, really slutty. She's shopping in foreign. She yells, click, clack, click, clack, <laughs> click, clack, click. I love olives because I make good martinis. Uh. <laughs> single mom. You married women are not shopping in heels. You guys show them four-year-old flip-flops, mismatched pink sweats, no makeup on whatsoever, Tootsie Pop hanging out this side of your face. One ponytail sticking out over here, and you're on the phone. I don't know why he doesn't find me sexy anymore. <laughs> flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. So in a supermarket, woman's coming at us. Now, attached to her cart is her son, a little younger than me, hanging off the cart, like that last scene in Moby Dick where the guy's stuck to the whale, <laughs> screaming, I want Captain Crunch! Oh, God! And we're four aisles from the cereal aisle, man. This kid's been flipping out a long time. Bright red, no oxygen left in his body at all. And he's not moving his feet, so under his screaming, as she's pushing the cart, you hear, eee! <laughs> and I can't believe this child is pulling this off. How's he doing this? And then I feel my dad get target lock. <laughs> And there's heat coming off him. And I realized this kid might get me hit. <laughs> you don't act like that. <laughs> Somebody needs a beer. <laughs> so we're getting closer and closer and closer, we're getting closer. Kids screaming. It's the first time in my life I ever saw the parental mind meld. Now, if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. You ever be somewhere with your kids and you're paying a bill and your kids are screwing off harder because they know you're weak and there's witnesses? <laughs> so in your frustration, you look over at another parent four aisles over and they have the exact same thing going on. And you meet that parent's eyes and about 85 gigs of information goes back and forth like that. <laughs> I can't believe I had him. You kill mine, I'll kill yours, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. They take all your money. It's horrible, isn't it? And they puke on you and piss on you. I want a Corvette, me too. Be strong, you too. Bye-bye. <laughs> So closer and closer and closer, we finally meet in the middle of the aisle, man, carts meet, and the woman doesn't say a word. She just looks at my dad and goes, huh? <laughs> and my father reached over, grabbed her kid, and went, waiting for all hell to break loose, man. And, and the kid stopped crying like that, and he, he looks at my dad, and he looks at me, and I look back at him like I was in one of those old prisoner of war movies. <laughs> you know the guy that won't join the escape because he can't spend another year in the hole? That guy? <laughs> Godspeed to you, though. <laughs> then the kid whips on his mom, and his mom turns on my father, and she gave my dad her phone number. <laughs> And I hated my stepbrother, Gregory. <laughs> so I'm watching this father negotiate with a five-year-old at the DMV. <laughs> and I had this moment where We've all had this moment in your life. Something horrible happens and you have to do something. That human thing comes up on you. What I wanted to do was stand up like William Wallace in Braveheart. Are we gonna let this little bastard ruin our DMV experience? <laughs> He's only five years old! 
killed. He's not supposed to be here for another 11 years. Let's kill him. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> but instead, like everybody else, I just went, Ugh. Now, what happened next put me over the edge. Because what I think should have happened, this guy should have grabbed this kid, should have walked him back into line with him, stood him next to him, and proceeded to do angry consonant. Get for your boot. Except to I. I knew when my father could no longer form a word, I was about to visit a gray area. <laughs> Instead, he escorts the child back to where we started and sits him two seats from me <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> and I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> you ever be somewhere something happens and you just react, and all of a sudden you find yourself halfway through what you shouldn't be doing? <laughs> but the train's rolling, so hell, blow the whistle. <laughs> the dad walks and the kid goes, Dad! And I go, hey! <laughs> Shut the frick up. <laughs> First of all, you're using it as a noun and it's an adjective, you frickin' motard. <laughs> Now, do you see your mom and dad in line? Look, do you see them? They're here because something's wrong and they're trying to fix it. And you know what they're talking about right now? Killing you. <laughs> so if you want to save your own life, you are going to shut up and be a good boy. Do you got it? You ever heard of a late-term abortion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this kid, you know what made me sad? This kid had obviously never been talked to because he just was flipping out and he was squeezing his hand and his Snickers went flaccid. It just went, eh. <laughs> He goes, okay, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Good boy. Did I get a trophy? <laughs> no, but you can participate <laughs> in shutting the frick up. <laughs> so now I'm waiting for that person to show up. And if you have kids, this person has walked up to you. And the person I'm about to describe is never a parent. They are a substitute teacher, green piece of boarding, lesbian Birkenstock wearing psychotherapist. <laughs> My God, did you just speak to a child like that? That was horrible. You've just destroyed his life for the rest of it. You know, he's been in therapy for years. Oh my God. And I'm waiting for them to show up because I'm going to punch him as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> Figure I hit him hard enough that, you know, I drive them to their own little gray area and I can just run. But that person doesn't show up, and I'm looking around, and I look over here, and everybody in the DMV who's sitting along this wall is looking at me like I'm the Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can we touch the hem of your gown? <laughs> now, some parents right now are thinking, wow, if you did that to my kid, I would punch you in the face. And if you're thinking that, <laughs> you're part of the problem. <laughs> That's right. You know why? Because I believe, I believe there's a line you don't cross. You don't touch someone else's kid. There was a guy in Walmart a couple years ago that slapped that two-year-old. He didn't just slap that two-year-old. He slapped that two-year-old like he was Chris Brown in a Three Stooges movie. <laughs> That's Rihanna's favorite joke. You don't touch someone else's kid, but here's how I feel about this whole incident. If anyone in this room or watching right now ever sees me in public with my two little ones, and you see my kids acting like jerks or Charlie Sheen, <laughs> I'm gonna give you permission to do one of two things. Or you can improvise dealer's choice, whatever. <laughs> I picked these two for your own protection. If you see me doing something I should be doing, my kids off somewhere doing something they shouldn't be doing, I want you to walk right up behind them and flick them in the ear as hard as you can. <laughs> Because it hurts like hell, but doesn't leave a fingerprint. <laughs> then you make a hard right and you just go. Or if you want a good sized class ring, I want you to walk up and just thunk them right on top of the head. Because it's still soft up there like a reset button. <laughs> right. 
and their behavior will reset. <laughs> now, they may say, Daddy, that guy hit me, and I may run and check the security cameras. <laughs> but if it was a clean hit, <laughs> I will pay you 20 bucks. <laughs> Are we ready to be the village again? Are we ready to be the village again? Good. Good. God. They are just running stuff, man. So I'm getting my ass kicked by this fat kid's dad in the DMV. <laughs> oh, now he wants to discipline someone. <laughs> that day made me think, what kind of dad am I? And I realized I'm an immersion dad, you know? I, I, my ex-wife would call me a prick, but I, but I think immersion dad. <laughs> I, I don't believe that a child needs a bunch of training or a bunch of like psych evals or you know every pad you can possibly get. If you want to do something, let's go balls out. Let's do the whole thing. Man, my five-year-old last year, Dad, I want to go snowboarding. I said, All right, get in the helicopter. <laughs> Took him to the top of the ridge. Pass. We'll be back. <laughs> you take someone who doesn't know how to snowboard to the top of a mountain, hand them a snowboard, and leave. <laughs> they will learn how to snowboard. <laughs> And he can kill a deer and survive on his own for two days. <laughs> He's a badass. <laughs> you know, I believe when they do wrong, they know they do wrong. I have good dad face, man. You know, I have really good dad face. What? What, you, what did you say? <laughs> and I've learned that yelling doesn't work, man. They say, come here, did you just lie to me? Let me tell you what's gonna happen right now. <laughs> That's what I just learned. And the first time I did that, oh, my boy came off the ground like that far. <laughs> And the hardest thing was to not laugh. <laughs> I can't even look at you. <laughs> I believe when they're wrong, they get told they're wrong. I believe when they're right, they get told they're right. When they do something great, I'm all over them. That's where my dad blew up, man. My dad, I didn't even, if I got a C, it had to be a B. If I got a B, it had to be an A. If I got an A, it had to be straight A's. If I got straight A's, I had to have the teacher do them, whatever it was. <laughs> I'm lying, I never got an A in my life. But my daughter did last semester, straight A's. Couldn't believe it, nine years old. I'm like, oh my God, that's phenomenal. You're, 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 wow. Whatever you want, babe, did you get a day for yourself. She goes, Dad, I want to go to the water park. I said, all right, let me get my vaccinations. <laughs> nothing better than swimming in others' urine. This is phenomenal! <laughs> I've never seen a pool with a head before. Anybody else? <laughs> and I'm walking around this water park, and you know what? There's no normal kids. Ribs are out of style, man. There's all these big monster, just, just juvenile manatee things just walking around. <laughs> Everybody's got a donut or a ch chip in their bathing suits, man. You know, there, there was pedophiles in the parking lot just throwing up. They're like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, man. I'm gonna sell the balloon animal business. I'm done with this. Climbing up to the slide on the fourth level, there's a seven-year-old popping a nitroglycerin, man. This tube is heavy. <laughs> We're killing them, man. We're killing them. Huge kid. We're killing them. You guys know this is the first generation in recorded American history that will not live as long as the generation before them because the way we fed them and the way we exercised them. And I'm not saying some of them don't need to go. <laughs> but not all of them. <laughs> My God, man, they're, they're, they're monstrous, man. They're, they're huge. I can't, I can't even fathom how big these kids are sometimes. It's time to knock the donuts and cookies out of their hands, instead of driving their ass to school, tether them to the bumper and make them chase you. <laughs> That's right. You have a rear view, they start to stumble, you just back it down a little bit. <laughs> driven to school every day? You guys get driven to school every day? Hell no, I had to walk to a bus stop. Now, when I first wrote that joke, the third time I did it, from the middle of the room, this voice comes out. We didn't have buses! <laughs> One school in the whole state, we had to walk. But you tell your little bus story, Fruit Cup, go ahead. <laughs> I felt like a douche. <laughs> but my dad would open that door 17. Poof, you better make that bus stop. You don't make that bus stop, you better get abducted. Yeah, that was the only valid tardy excuse in our house, man. If I was late for school, I'd better show up with two cops and a guy handcuffed to an ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
They're so huge. And I'm not just saying this for their health, but as a parent, you can now get put in jail if your kid gets too fat. Yep, woman in North Carolina got put in jail because her son got a little fat. Well, he was 555 pounds. <laughs> That's not a little fat. <laughs> Nobody at 12 should weigh more than a jet ski. <laughs> That's in the Bible. But she didn't let that happen. When the kid was nine and he was 320, he was making decisions in that house. <laughs> Daniel, put down the cow. Ah! <laughs> Do we love our kids that much? I don't love my kids that much. Let them kill themselves, man. And this woman knew something was wrong with her kid when he was four. He didn't have two Domino's pizzas and go five, five, five. <laughs> Did she just love him that much? Oh my God, look at my little boy out there on the big wheel. Yeah, that's mine with the man boobs. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's big. He's got a thyroid thing. He's part Sharpay puppy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he's all wrinkly now. He lost his butt crack like a year ago. I guess. <laughs> now he just kind of hosed him off and sham wow. <laughs> and I tell this story because I was a fat kid. Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I was huge. I was good. And my dad was never nice about it. I was not his chubby buddy. <laughs> he did not give me time to find myself to my face and in front of people called me fatso and lard ass and Hindenburg, which I had to look up. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> He's insulting me historically. <laughs> We go school shopping. When you're a fat boy, there's one place in America you can shop the Sears Husky Department. <laughs> I hear the pain. It's OK. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sears, for calling it a Husky. Not more to love department. <laughs> I already know I have a big, bulbous ass, but you put a little tag on the top of my jeans that said Husky. Why don't I just point an arrow down to my big ass? <laughs> Thank you, Sears, for buying my future therapist a new ski boat. <laughs> And we would walk into the Sears Husky department for school clothes. And my dad was never cool, never stealth. Here's how my dad would walk me into the Sears Husky department, because he wanted everybody to know. All right, I got a fat ass kid, needs some fat ass pants for his fat ass. Can I get some help, please? Yeah, just give me a like, tarp and some bungee cord, wrap up like a little turd burrito. Can I get some help? Dad, shut up, shut up, and tell him, no corduroy keeps wearing out the thighs. Can I get some help? And you know what? After the third year of that humiliation, I got so pissed off and I got so angry, I started like working out and eating right, which made the dreams of stabbing him a lot more vivid. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm screwed up for life mentally, but I look good. <laughs> I actually am screwed up for life mentally. I gotta be honest with you. I actually, uh, from the time I was 10 to the time I was 28 years old, I really thought my father wished me dead. <clears throat> and my brother's here too, he thought the same thing. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, I just thought, you know, my dad, he said, single father, didn't want me, man. And, you know, 10 to 28, 28 years old, to have that going on in your mind still, not a good thing for a grown man. And I knew things started going sideways because the voices in my head <laughs> had started singing. <laughs> Put the gun to your head and pull the trigger. Under your chin and the hole will be bigger. <laughs> And then my imaginary friends staged an intervention. <laughs> Look, Chris, we don't exist, but if you don't clean up this attitude, we're gonna leave. <laughs> and then my real friends got involved. They're like, dude, you're intense, man. You're defensive. It's like hanging with Gary Busey at Mardi Gras, bro. <laughs> I want you to take the seminar. And one of my friends had taken this, and I was like, oh, I'll take the seminar. You know why? Because I wanted them to validate what I already thought about my dad. I take the seminar, they hear about my life, they go, wow, your dad is a douche. Here's a receipt, you win, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> So I'm in the seminar and you gotta share about your life, man. I'm full out. I'm like, yeah, man, my dad, <laughs> you know, he spent all his money fighting my mom for custody. So when I got older, there was enough money to go to college because he was still paying lawyers off for like 12 years, man. <laughs> so I didn't get it, so I'm an idiot. I don't have a degree in anything. And the guy was like, whoa, your dad spent all his money to get custody of you? I know, right? And then. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was like, you're too fat, you're too slow, you're too stupid, you better work hard than everybody because you don't have anything of anybody. Come on, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, loser. Let's go, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, loser. And he did it to me every day of my life. They're like, whoa, your dad as a single father was with you every day of your life? That's how much he hated me, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I get done kind of crying and I look up and the whole seminar is looking at me like this. 
And the guy goes, well, that's one interpretation, but how about this? How about someone who's never there hates your guts, but someone who spent all their money and was there every day probably loves you more than they love themselves, you douche. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing the last part. And I had this crazy moment where everything I'd thought about my dad since I was a little kid shifted, man. The poles just switched, and I was like, oh, no. No, no. Ah. <laughs> you know what? I did not come here and pay you people money to tell me the truth. <laughs> now what? And the guy goes, you got to call your dad. No. <laughs> that was a problem, because the last time I talked to my dad was two years earlier. And we'd ended that conversation with a fist fight. <laughs> now, I thought everybody would understand this when I started talking about this, because here's how I was raised. You know, the cops show up on Thanksgiving. <laughs> your mom shoots and kills her third husband. You fight your dad, and you're a man. <laughs> but someone said, no, that's not how everyone was raised. <laughs> So my car had broken down at my dad's house. I'm 26. I had to drive back to Los Angeles. My car and I, so I got it. I was working on it like crazy. And instead of helping me, my father would come out every 20 minutes and do this. You fix it yet, loser? I didn't think so. And you'd walk back in the house. <laughs> come out 30 minutes later with a fresh beer. Hey, why don't you just slip the brake line so it rolls over? You put you both out of your misery. And you walk back in the house. <laughs> come back out with another fresh beer. You know, monkeys could have built robots by now. And they walk back in the house. <laughs> then about 4 o'clock after doing this all day, he comes out, hey! Let me tell why you're such a comedian as a mechanic. <laughs> Loser. And I stood up and went, come on, bitch! <laughs> now, I could have said, Dad, could you help me? But instead, I chose, come on, bitch. <clears throat> and we had a white trash carnival on the front lawn. <laughs> my brother Dave was there, and my brother Dave smokes a lot of pot, and even he was upset. He's like, stop it. <laughs> You're making me contemplate my existence in the universe. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so I hadn't talked to him in two years. So I call him from the seminar. This was a tough phone call, man, because I know I'm the one. OK. So I pick it up. I'm like, Ugh! hey, Dad, uh, it's Chris. Listen, hey, don't hang up. Um, <laughs> your son. Listen, I, I just want you to know, I'm calling you to tell you something. I, I'm at this seminar, my dad goes, if they give you Kool-Aid, don't drink it. <laughs> dad, it, it's, it's not that kind of seminar. <laughs> but, but listen, we've been sitting around talking about our lives, and I was telling him how you raised me. And he goes, look, Tom Cruise needs this crap, but not you. Get out of there right now. <laughs> Dad, I'm okay. No, you're not. I know they're standing right there. All right, do they have guns? Press one beat for yes, two beats for no. Dad! <laughs> I'm okay. But I want you to know something. I thought you hated my guts from the time I was 10 until now. <laughs> and I just got who you've been in my life. That without you being on me all the time and making sure I did what I was supposed to do, that I wouldn't be successful in a business not many people are. So I want to say thank you, and I love you. And I think we're all holding our breath for the hallmark moment. <laughs> but you're going to suffocate. Because <laughs> there's nothing on the other end of the phone, man. No life force, literally. I thought he hung up. I'm like, hello? And he goes, what the hell did you think I was doing, dumbass? <laughs> I was trying. I was trying to raise you to not be me. Plus, you're way stupider than me. Where the hell are you? <laughs> Dad, I'm OK. And I love you, too. Quit saying that! <laughs> All right, fine. If I raised you so well, are you going to raise your kids like I raised you? And I thought about it. And I went, hell no. And I hung up the phone. <laughs> but in that moment, I got that pure truth of this life that you only get a few times. Come here. You got to abuse your kids a little bit. <laughs> Not a lot. Not a lot. I don't want, all right. <laughs> Let me clarify. I don't want anybody ending up on Nancy Grace next week. <laughs> Comedian said drive them into the lake, so I did it.
But you gotta suck a little trust out of them, a little love, man. Every once in a while, he, he, you know, get something that blindsides them because it's a hard world out there, and they think it's money and donuts, man. When they're about this tall, I want you guys to walk around the house just swinging your elbows like this, man. <laughs> it's not abuse if it's an accident. <laughs> and they gotta get that move down when you're swinging. Hey, whoa, ha ha! You miss me, mom? I'm growing up. <laughs> Swing those elbows. If you don't swing your elbows and get your kids don't get that move down, they're going to be 16 years old, go to cross the street and get killed by a bus mirror. <laughs> but you got to make it look like an accident, for real. <laughs> because they know it's the other way. What happened to parental rights in the last 10 years? My God, man. Your kids know if they show up to school with a mark on them or a bump on their arm or a shoe print on their forehead. <laughs> School's coming after you. What'd you do to your kid? What'd you do to your kid? What'd you do to your kid? No matter what you say to the school, you sound like a mob guy. He fell. <laughs> I didn't see none. <laughs> have I thoroughly answered the questions you have asked? <laughs> I think it needs to be the other way. I think if your child shows up to school for three months without a mark on him and no anxiety, they should be concerned that you're not being an involved parent. <laughs> No mark on him at all. That means he's not riding his bike, not climbing trees, not playing football. He's playing video games on his ass. Man, your daughter's having these skin knees from, from roller skating or playing with it. I think the principal needs to walk right up to your kid. Hey, Frank. Ah! <laughs> wow, you didn't even flinch. <laughs> Tell your mom and dad I want to see them in my office on Monday. <laughs> Hey, Vincent, nice limp. You tell your dad, good job. <laughs> Vincent's parents love him. <laughs> Vince is going to be valedictorian. This country, this amazing country, America, was not built on love, hugs, timeouts, and trophies you didn't earn. This country's built on humiliation, shame, and fear, because people said we sucked and we proved them wrong, man. And, you know, I swear to you, this, 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 this amazing country right now was, if you're successful right now, and if you live in California, in Southern California, in San Diego, and you make your rent, <laughs> you're successful. <laughs> And by the way, you didn't get there because someone loved you, hugged you, or gave you a trophy you didn't earn. You got there because at one point in your life, somebody you respected a little bit turned to you and, you know what, dude? You're a loser. In that second, you decided to bust your ass to make them choke on that sentence. That's why. That's why. You don't think... You don't think... You don't... You don't think that Steve Jobs, the president of Apple, doesn't have daddy issues? <laughs> this guy invented something had never been seen before. In his garage as a teenager, man, his dad must have been freaking out, man. What the hell are you doing? What are all these wires in here? Why is my TV in pieces? How come you're not playing football? How come you're not riding your bike? Who's this Wozniak kid? Are you gay? What's going on? <laughs> I'm gonna make so much money, you're gonna disappear. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of Steve Jobs' dad, ever? <laughs> he got deleted. <laughs> Our country is built on striving to be better. The pioneers that came out, man, the wars we fought, we are badasses. We, took, we, took, we went after this guy and kept going after him, man. You know what? And if you're in here tonight and you believe all a child needs is timeouts, hugs, space to find who he is, and trophies he didn't earn, then frankly, you're a communist, and I want you to take your chocolate, and you go back to Australia. <laughs> I'm not sure about that last one. <laughs> I went to a California public school. <laughs> but you get the gist. And it's hard to be a parent, man. You parents that have got a kid to adulthood, holy crap, that's amazing. Because you got to bust your ass to get a kid to adulthood. Or you can take enough prescription medication just think you're being a good parent. <laughs> Mommy has your medicine, go play. <laughs> oh yeah, our country is high right now, man. <laughs> prescription medication is currently, it was reported, I checked it on the internet, number two killer in America. Prescription medication, yep, because of side effects, poisonings, and overdoses. Man, number two, people at Pfizer, we made the top five, bitches! <laughs> we are on your ass, heart disease! Number two killer, man. We haven't lost someone to heroin in a while. 
But just the last couple of years, Brittany Murphy, man, prescription drug overdose. Heath Ledger, prescription drug overdose, man. Greg Giraldo, brilliant comedian, prescription drug overdose. Michael Jackson, prescription drug overdose. Keith Richards, still playing his ass off. <laughs> Courtney Love, still standing in the stairwells, thinking they're escalators. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> USA Today reported two out of three people currently taking antidepressants is still severely depressed. Let me say that again. Two out of three people currently taking antidepressants is still severely depressed. That's like buying a six pack of beer and four of them sober you up. <laughs> I'm way more alert. So they came with this new drug called Abilify and these drug commercials. We're one of the very few countries on the planet that allows them to actually advertise drugs on television, you know? And they're so good at it. Because these drug commercials never show someone getting medical attention, ever. <laughs> ever. You don't know what the hell it's about, man. A woman's walking down a path, you know? She's she upset or concerned or what the hell? Then it's like squirrels running around. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> And the guys that do the voiceovers, are, man, they are hypnotic. I would sleep with these guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Is your antidepressant making you depressed? Don't you think by law the squirrel should lean in and go, we can't believe we said it either. <laughs> well, if it is, top it with Abilify and get back on the path to happiness. <laughs> OK. Oh, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. You want me to take an antidepressant on top of the antidepressant that's already making me severely depressed? Isn't that like a suicide speedball? <laughs> hey, how about you just beat me to death with a nine iron and save me the copay? <laughs> and these antidepressants, my mother, by the way, just was, was, was a manic depressant schizophrenic who would not take her medication. And I asked my dad one time, dad, ask mom why she wouldn't do it. And he said, here's what she said. He said, well, I don't take it because you don't know how high my highs are and you'll never know how low my lows are. Ooh. <laughs> and the weird thing is I get it. You know, these drugs just get you in the middle, man. That's what they do. They kind of take the highs and lows out so you can maintain, man. You know, I, I want a heartbeat life. I don't want a flatline life. No, I don't want my tsunami heartbeat like my mom had. <laughs> but I don't want a drug that mellows me out. I don't want a drug that pops my ass out of bed at 7 a.m. makes me do laundry. Give me that drug, man. <laughs> Give me something called get off your acidone. I would take that all day, <laughs> wouldn't you? Something that, something that made, you, made you do your taxes and not be afraid? <laughs> it's January 2nd and my taxes are finished. Thank you, get off your acidone. Because <laughs> we have drugs for stupid. If there's a drug out there for something called restless leg syndrome, really, this is a problem. I didn't know that. I've never met one of these people in my life. Are they locked away in a camp somewhere till they finally cure this? Are they on an island just staring through the barbed wire at us? One day, man, one day. <laughs> I hope the telethon raises enough money this year. <laughs> restless leg syndrome? I want restless leg syndrome because I hate doing cardio. <laughs> I like to take too much, get off your ass, and oh, crap, ah, oh, crap, ah, oh, crap. I'm going to run a 3 two, 40 and paint Oregon. I'll be back. <laughs> Wouldn't you take it off your ass in a second? Wouldn't you? In a second, man. And by the way, I want to say one more thing before we go any further. My mother was a manic depressive schizophrenic who, after a stint in prison, shot herself. My sister was an amazing poet, beautiful girl, who was raised by this woman. And one day, her boyfriend broke up with her for the fourth time in three weeks. So to show him, she went to his house, opened up his drawer, got a handgun, sat at the end of his bed, and blew her brains all over his headboard. I just went through a divorce, five years in court. It cost me two and a half million dollars. If anyone should be forced by law to take antidepressants. <laughs> Instead, I chose to be an antidepressant, and you can take me with alcohol. <laughs> right. Give me 
that drug I want, man. Get off your acetone. I would love that. Warning, get off your acetone is for people suffering from laziness, fear, feeling like a loser, or living with their parents when you're 32 years old. <laughs> Side effects of get off your acetone include joy, happiness, sense of accomplishment, and being attractive to the opposite sex. <laughs> you actually don't need get off your acetone if you just get off your ass. <laughs> Ask your physician if get off your acetone and all other prescription medication are part of a multi-billion dollar conspiracy by the drug companies to keep you unhealthy and unhappy, except for Vicodin, which is a gift from the baby Jesus. <laughs> They could do it, man. Tomorrow, they could do it, man. These technologies, they know what these, all these elements do. They can make a drug that would pop our ass out of bed, make us work all day, we'd make money, we'd be happy, but they'll never do it, because then they couldn't control us, and I didn't realize this until I stopped taking my medication. <laughs> Technology's out of hand, man. USA Today again said, technology's moving 22,000 times faster than it did in 1900. Oh, you guys feel that? That was all our phones going obsolete. <laughs> It's a crazy, man, and we gotta be connected, don't you? Gotta be connected, gotta have it. Every time the new one comes on, what is that? <laughs> Give me some of that. It lands planes, I want that. <laughs> it's just a phone. No, it's not. <laughs> it's part of me. <laughs> gotta have it, man. Gotta be texting faster, gotta be texting faster. Maybe one day, man, they could just take my friend's brain and put part of it in my head so I can think their thoughts as they think them. <laughs> But texting doesn't connect us. Texting disconnects us. I love texting. You know why? Someone calls, I don't want to talk to. I wait for them to hang up, and then I text back, what? <laughs> when F you would have been so much easier. <laughs> We've lost the ability to speak to each other. We need to invent the I person, man. I'm in Costco when I notice this. We're evolving into these praying, hunched over mantis beings. <laughs> Everybody's in Costco on their phone. Even families are on their own phones, and they're just like, yeah, I just pushed my car three feet forward. I just bought 1,700 rolls of toy for three bucks. <laughs> and then behind them are these other idiots with their hands over their ears with the Bluetooth avatar people <laughs> speaking loudly to nobody, like psychotic, well-dressed hobos just walking around. And they're speaking louder than anybody should speak unless they're warning the population of a nuclear attack. I like to walk right up to these douchebags and finish the other side of the conversation for them. <laughs> hey, man, you want to come over for dinner? <laughs> I would love to come over for dinner. <laughs> well, is that four or five o'clock? You're moving kind of fast. <laughs> Dude, can you hold on for a second? Sure, I got nothing to do till dinner now. <laughs> Dude, I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I bring red wine or white wine for dinner? <laughs> and I talk about revolution, and I mean it, man. It's time for us to stand up and take America back. It is, man. But you know what? It's hard. Libya shows us what happened in revolution. People get shot. So we're going to start at the basic level, the stuff that causes cancer to all of us that we don't bring up in public. From now, we're doing it. But you got to use this, because it'll keep you safe. <laughs> Someone cut you off in line at the supermarket? What a dick! Yeah, I should beat your ass in front of your girlfriend. <laughs> but you can't laugh. But the technology, we could take our country back in one day, man. They would never get over us again, man. We'd make them do what they want. We have these phones. And if we emailed it, everybody we knew, they knew, they knew, they knew, six degrees of separation, we could take our entire country back in one day. I say we do it on a Wednesday because I don't want to screw up the weekend. <laughs> And all we're going to do is we're going to email everybody we know, make a plan, and we're going to just shut the country down on that Wednesday from 2 to 4 o'clock. That's all we're going to do. You know, and they were going to do what we sent out a keyword, trophies. <laughs> and when you get that keyword, you just, whatever you're doing, you just stop. If you're driving, you pull over. Every freeway in the country just empties out, man. You know, seriously, man. You're shopping, you just stop shopping, man. No money is spent for two hours. Everybody stops working, man. They can't fire all of us. <laughs> And then at 4 o'clock, go back to work like nothing happened, man. Our government would have an aneurysm, man. <laughs> I'll call the Marines back. I don't know what the hell this was. <laughs> and then the next day, we send the president a text message, not from my phone, because I don't want to get shot. 
And it simply says, Mr. President, we shut it down for two hours. You, the House and the Senate, don't start doing what you said you were going to do and what we elected you to do. Then the next time, we shut it down for a month. You don't run it anymore. We do. LOL. <laughs> As Thomas Jefferson also said, he said, when the people are afraid, it's tyranny. When the government's afraid, <laughs> it's liberty. <laughs> yeah. You know what happened the very next day after we did that cell phone thing? Cell phone laws would change and I would disappear. <laughs> I'd be hanging out with Steve Jobs' dad somewhere. <laughs> Where are we? I don't know, but it's pretty well designed, isn't it? <laughs> My gay son built it. But that would be a nonviolent revolution that would make Gandhi and Martin Luther King proud. And the problem is we'll never do it again because we're not those people anymore, man. You know what? We all have cell phones and big screen TVs. And there's a Taco Bell every 15 feet. And I would much rather give up my freedom than give up my shit. Yeah. <laughs> True. And we used to be the best at revolution. We were amazing at it, man. We took the country in revolution. My God, we had a civil war. We were so fired up, we fought ourselves. <laughs> No one else wanted a piece. We're like, me and you, let's go. <laughs> we fought the British over a 2% tax increase. That's what put us over the top. 2%, really? I didn't know that because I went to a California public school. <laughs> Two, we were dicks, 2%. We were like, take the tea back too, bitches. <laughs> That's right. We'll go to Seattle, open Starbucks, and rule the world. Bye, me. <laughs> we were amazing. Now, with the Patriot Act, we get naked in the airport and we don't bitch at all. <laughs> okay, so hold on. You're going to violate my constitutional rights. Then you want me to walk to this machine that's going to give you a naked picture of me and it's going to give me cancer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that was too malicious. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, I think I have enough time before my flight to go pee blood. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You know the best countries at Revolution are right now? The Middle East, man. Because these phones, man, they started seeing what people live here are showing them. That's, this is what America is. And they're like, holy crap, where's my liberty? You know, they're amazing, man. And these people are getting told they live in a democratic society. By the way, you live in a democratic society. And you can go vote in this democratic society. And then the clerics are going, and by the way, if you go vote in this democratic society, we're going to kill you. And then we're going to cut off your head, show it to your kids, and kill your kids. And in the face of that, these people are still going to vote. Some of us, yeah. <laughs> Some of us won't go if it's 51 degrees outside. <laughs> Ooh, with wind chill, that's 48. I can't go, man. My, I need to get my voting socks on. Or God forbid it's 95 and humid. Oh, it's so hot. How do you vote with your underwear stuck to your butt like this? I can't vote. Oh, I'm going to go home. Oh, God. Oh, let me go home. Oh, sit down. Oh, whoo. Air conditioning. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> oh, let's watch the news. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at the Libyans, those democratic bastards fighting for freedom. Wow. Uh, oh, American Idol. <laughs> shut up, man. Quit talking. Dude, shut up. I'm watching my show. Dude, quit it. Because if I can't hear him sing, how am I going to vote? <laughs> Ten years since 9-11, we became the United States of American Idol, and that pisses me off, man. <laughs> and they don't show us what's going on, those guys fighting for us, it pisses me off, man. I'm worried. I'm really, you know what I'm worried about? If we keep going the way we're going and don't get pissed, I'm worried what our kids are going to say about us. What is my kid going to say about me in 25 years if we let it go how it's going? Hey, Dad! I want to thank you for letting television raise me. <laughs> and those video games you let me play destroyed my social skills. Oh, God, I can't look you in the eye that long. I was obese by eight, had juvenile diabetes by 12. Been on Ritalin since I was four. Ooh, and that summer at Fat Camp when you were on vacation in Italy without me, that was stellar! <laughs> I know you're too busy to deal with me, Dad. You with your blogging and your internet porn marathons and <laughs> mom watching The Real Housewives of Alabama. <laughs> and because you were into your own thing, Dad, the infrastructure of our country fell apart and there's no jobs anymore, so me and my friends just sell each other the same latte back and forth. <laughs> But I read this book on America, Dad. I decided to pull myself on my bootstraps. I became addicted to crystal meth, and now I have my own freeway off-ramp where I beg for change. I found a piece of cardboard, but I need you to loan me some money for a Sharpie. 
Or if we decide to not take it anymore, maybe this can happen in 25 years. Father, I just graduated from the most amazing educational system in the world. And I have a mild English accent. <laughs> the air is cleaner than it's ever been. The water is pristine. Everyone has a job. We're the world leaders in technology once again, Father. Oh, and that 22-year late-term abortion rule is incredible. <laughs> Father, there's no more douchebags. <laughs> Now, Father, in history class, they said 25 years ago, there was a revolution. Father, were you part of the revolution? Well, yeah. I mean, me and some people from Escondido. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, Father. After the revolution, did you receive trophies? <laughs> yeah. I got you. And all I had to do was participate. <laughs> because we can now. We have the internet. We can talk to everybody all over the world like that now. The internet, we forgot how cool it is. We have this thing in our house right now that you go to and you can get any question ever asked from the beginning of time answered. Anything. How do I fix my car? I don't want to pay a guy. Uh, Clickety-clack. Why does my arm hurt? Clickety-clack. What are these bumps on my anus? Clickety-clack. <laughs> Saved my life. Do you realize college is so expensive? But if you wanted to, you could download all the forms, all the tests, everything you want from the internet for nothing, and you could become a PhD in about three years. And instead, we're using this amazing tool to argue that Superman can beat up Batman. <laughs> Which is a true, Superman would kick Batman's ass. <laughs> then he would rape Alfred just to make a point. <laughs> you know why? No rematch then. You got beat up and your manservant got raped? You're not fighting that guy again. <laughs> Game, set, match, Superman. You can read about it in my blog. Anyway. <laughs> and all we use it for is bitching. We bitch, bitch, bitch. The internet, oh my god, the haters that live there, bitch, 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 you know? That's all we do is bitch, man. That's all we do. You know, the terrorists tell us, sorry, Fox News tells us all the time. <laughs> It's illegal immigration's fault. That's why the country's like it is. No, it's not. It's not illegal immigration's fault. It's our fault for going to Home Depot, picking up six of those guys to build an unpermitted bathroom on a house we can't afford. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's, it's, not, it's not the Democrats or the Republicans. That's just Coke and Pepsi, man. Same crap, different can. And we keep voting the same guys in, man. You know, I'll do what you elect me to do. The check's in the mail. I didn't know she was 17. Blah, blah, blah. You know, and it's not, it's not healthcare's fault. The Republicans want to take down healthcare. Really? It's not healthcare's fault. It's our fault. That a lot of us can't get out of bed without a Prozac. Then at lunch, we eat a Xanax. Then we go home that night to make love. Can't do that with a Cialis or a Viagra. Then we gotta get six hours of crap sleep, pop two Ambien for that. Wake up the next morning with a line of cocaine, which is the only organic thing we're putting in our bodies anymore. <laughs> then we gotta give our kids two Ritalins. They don't go to school and stab their teacher who's trying to have sex with them. That's the problem. And by the way, you're supposed to have anxiety. Did you know that? You're supposed to be worried that the rent's not going to get paid, because that's how the fucking rent gets paid. <laughs> you, you, like... you are. You are. <laughs> You're supposed to worry about your kids and worry about what's going on. That's how everything works out. Okay, do you realize if the cavemen had these drugs, we would already be extinct? <laughs> because the last thought going through the last caveman's mind would have been, huh, that tiger's running right at me. <laughs> and one day, one of these kids, one of these little, fat, doughy, video game playing, peanut allergy having kids, <laughs> Now, I don't remember that in fourth grade during PBJ day, body bags being taken out of the school. <laughs> One of those kids is gonna be president. Got cold in here, didn't it? 
and he's gonna have a lot of trophies. <laughs> but he's not gonna know what losing feels like or have humility or have grace. And one day, someone from another country's not gonna do something right and he's gonna hit the nuke button. And we're gonna be so high, <laughs> we're just gonna watch. <laughs> and as that nuclear fireball rips the flesh from our skeletons, our last thought's gonna be, uh, pretty colors. <laughs> But what if we stopped it right now? What if on this 4th of July, we decided we're going to do one thing for someone else besides ourselves from now on? What if we made that Muslim dude down the street our best friend? You worried about terrorism? That Muslim guy's lived there four years, man. He's need to pull the trigger by now. But you worry about terrorism? That guy's going to find one way before you do. <laughs> hey, Zamed, is that a backpack? That is not a backpack. Get that dude. Get that dude. <laughs> See you at the barbecue, baby. <laughs> What if instead of worrying about the government doing it, what if we all just pooled up and gave our kids school some money so they have a music program so your kid becomes a rock star and buys you an airplane, man? What if we spent a little time with a foster kid, man, or adopted a kid before Angelina Jolie gets fucking all of them, man? <laughs> it would change everything, one thing. And I know you're thinking, wow, nice speech, Oprah. <laughs> one thing, what are you gonna do? I wrote the show. <laughs> because Bono won't do comedy. <laughs> and if my show made you laugh, that's enough. If it makes you do one thing to make this amazing country better and take America back, that's even better. But if all my show did tonight is piss you off, make you go home and sign into your blog, Cobra Dragon 442, <laughs> and write a review about how bad I suck, fine, I may suck, but you're part of the problem. <laughs> And that's what we have to do. Let's call it when we see it, man. And little things. If you're in the movie theater and some dude's on his phone during the movie, don't get intimidated. Go, dude, turn off your phone. Now, he may turn to you and go, what's your problem, douche? And I want you to say this. My problem is people like you who actually believe that the rules don't apply to them, that they can do what they want when they want. And it's because of people like you that our society's slowly getting flushed down the toilet. So turn off your damn phone, and I am not a douche. I'm a revolutionary. <laughs> I'm Christopher Titus, and I approve this message. Good night.